Hello friends and welcome back to the Steam Railroading Institute in Owasso, Michigan. Today we're sharing a special behind the scenes look at the teamwork and care that went into the recent repairs of our beloved steam engine, the Pure Marquette 1225. Justin Hamilton, the CMO here at SRI, joins us and gives us all the details. From tiny parts to big components, our crew worked together to make sure she's safe, strong, and ready for more adventures. Let's take a listen and see how all that hard work paid off. My name is Justin Hamilton. I'm the Chief Mechanical Officer for the Steam Railroading Institute. As most people know, we spent the entire year you know, going back into 2024 when we took the engine out of service for, for boiler issues. Um, we spent 2025 retubing the boiler, constructing brand new superheater units and other repairs that the boiler needed including all of the federal inspections and calculations to prove that the, the boiler is, is uh, the correct strength. When we fired up before NPE, it was to test the boiler. What we did not expect was a overheating bearing. This bearing had run cool at, you know, at normal operating tem temperatures the last 1,200 miles it's run. That caught us by surprise. The SRI shops, it is extremely difficult if not impossible for us to remove those bearings having access to glc's shops and their drop table made this happen um, we would not have been able to, uh, the first time the bearing overheated we used glc's drop table to lower the axle away from the bearing to inspect the surfaces and, and they didn't look terrible we polished them up and put it back together to, to return the engine to service as quickly as we could and it's still overheated so now we knew there's a, a bigger issue with the shape of the bearing or the geometry that uh, the bearing wasn't getting the oil it was supposed to be getting. Uh, something on that bearing was wiping the oil off. So we took it back to GLC, dropped the wheel out entirely, removed the entire bearing box and bearing, which this, uh, this assembly weighs 450 pounds. Even with a drop table, that's difficult to do. The, the driving wheels on 1225 are too tall to actually transfer on their drop table. So all we can do is lower it straight down and we have to figure out how to get this 500 pound box out from underneath the engine and hoist it into the air and back to our shop where we can machine it. While we have Morse taper tooling, we didn't have a boring bar that was the correct size for the bearing that we had to cut. So we ended up making that in-house. And um, precision wise, where that bearing is bored affects the tram of the locomotive or otherwise where the, you know, the, the correct spacing and alignment of the axles uh, compared to the frame of the locomotive. The, the axles must be parallel to each other and the correct spacing from one axle to the next. In 2023, we made these adjustments during the running gear rebuild by replacing the shoes and wedges in the frame, which are br uh, bronze bearings that are in front of and behind of the bearing box. We still had records from that running gear rebuild uh, that was done through FMW of the calculated center line of the bearing. We referenced the bearing box based on the shoe face and we knew that it was 8.127 inches from the shoe face to center line of the bearing. We set the box up in our boring mill so that it was square uh, widthwise and then indicated off of the table and, and uh, raised our, our boring bar so that its center line matched that original dimension. We were within a half a thousandth accuracy there. Well, from, from my uh, hours of service records, we had 94 hours into it. That was just my time. We also had volunteers and other staff involved. Uh, cumulatively, we're probably looking at four to 500 hours for this second fix. This is not including the first time we tried to we tried to polish the bearing and, and put it back into service. Um, and this this happened over what a four day period? Five days? Yeah. So a lot of the modifications that we make to the, the locomotives, they're based on the original design but constructed with our with the technology we have available today. The fun part is when we don't have a blueprint for it. When we have a component that's 84 years old, we don't know what the original dimensions were. It's worn out, so there's no features on this part we can measure. 
that say this is what it used to be because we you know those those parts or surfaces are gone they're rusted away or, or worn away and um, back to original specifications so that they work as intended is, is a challenge you have to understand what the part does how it wears you have to imagine scenarios uh, basically of how this part operated in service and how it wore out a lot of these parts interact with each other so we can't just make a dimension a random number because that might interact with several other components yeah. so it's, there's a lot of cross-checking if we if we make this part such a thickness does everything else that works with that part still function as intended at least 50 percent of this job is just research you know finding old prints finding designs from other locomotives that are similar to what we have they might not be the same part or, or the you know the same manufacturing date but it, it gives us an idea of how these components all have to work together. Most of the time it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, with this bearing repair, we brought the bearing back to its original oil clearances. So this, it still has to go through like a break-in trial. You know, the next three or 400 miles will be breaking this bearing in. We're slowly renewing all of these old parts. But we're still in, we're installing brand new bearings on an old frame, on old axles. Uh, little by little, we're working through all of these these little quirks, and uh, we're also getting very good at keeping records. Any part or component that we manufacture new comes with a CAD drawing and a three D model. So if there's one thing from Santa that we could get, uh, it would probably be to get off of a dirt floor shop and get an inspection pit where we can look at some of these bearings better and uh, hopefully find some of these defects before they become problems. Thank you for joining us on this sneak peek into the repair work recently done on the Pier Marquette 1225. We hope you enjoyed learning how our team keeps this amazing engine running for future generations to enjoy. Make sure you find us on Facebook and Instagram and check out all the details of upcoming excursions and events at michigansteamtrain.com. If you'd like to see more stories and learn more about trains or visit us in person, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow along. We cannot wait to share the next adventure with you. Steam Railroading Institute, where steam lives and history moves.